Welcome to the Fan Counter Celebrity Podcast. My name's Nick. So glad that you chose to be here. You are here for part two of our conversation with the great Janice Kent, who has had an amazing acting career, and we have been reliving. Last week, we left off talking about Brian Levant, the executive producer of the new Leave it to Beaver, and talking about her memories of him. We're going to start uh, going into some other stories in just a minute. The one way that I know that you're listening is when you join Sharpie Nation on Facebook. Yep, it's just like the marker, Sharpie. So go to Facebook.com, search Sharpie Nation, S-H-A-R-P-I-E Nation. Ask to join the group. I promise I'll let you in. And there you will find exclusive discussions about the episodes that we're talking about here on Fan Counters, as well as you'll find out about what guests are coming up before anybody else. And that will give you the opportunity to have your question answered on the show. That's an exclusive benefit to being a part of Sharpie Nation. Doesn't cost anything. We'd love to have you. You can also email your comments or questions to hello at fancounters.com. And my only wish I have for 2020 is that you share our show with a friend. Tell somebody about us. Get them to subscribe. We've got over 100 weekly episodes for them to catch up on. So if they're listening to podcasts at work, this is a perfect show where they can get the inside secrets to some of today's favorite television shows and movies going on tour with artists as they are going across the country. We're hearing their stories and you can't get these stories anywhere else except here on the Fan Counters Celebrity Podcast. Right now, we're going to jump back into part two of our conversation with Janice Kent. Coming to you from nowhere near the entertainment capital of the world, this is Fan Counters with Nick and Elizabeth on the Podfix Network. There was this mob of people, and they're screaming my name. Crazy fans. Stop following me. Don't come around my house. If you do, the cops are going to be at yours. If I'm having dinner with my wife, don't sit down at my table. Don't follow me into the bathroom. Can I take a picture? We're going to, oh my God. I think this guy wants to fight me. Ended up being a fan. I'm the only one that's ever been on Sam Jackson and lived to tell about it. <laughs> well, guess what? I have a big surprise for you. That's why we call it Fan Counters. <laughs> I don't think you're going to last on the air very long. <laughs> I think you had a great time, too, with Cindy Beagle, who I really, really uh, just love. She's a great girl, great writer. She brought so much, and it was so great back in the day for me, too, because, you know, this was, these were different times. Here were two women writers, Lisa Kite and, and Cindy, and it was like, phew, they're writing for Mary Ellen. They gave me, you know, it was like, okay, you know. Yeah, she's, she's awesome. high energy, too. I really enjoy speaking with her, too. Yeah, she's great. She is so great. No, it's a really, really nice group, I have to say. And, you know, I've been on some other shows, mainly as guests and things. And, you know, I was actually on a number of episodes of Days of Our Lives. I, you know, uh, so I had an experience being on a soap opera set. And it's it's not that they're not nice. Of course, this was something unique for me because it was I was part of a family, not only with the cast, but with the crew. There were so many people that just stayed almost the whole five years that we did it. So, you know, it was it was a special time, special special group of people. Kalina Kiff, she played your daughter in the newly yeah. Beaver. Do you have any contact with her today? Um, on Facebook, we she lives in Canada, and um, she's a filmmaker, and she is, I think, you know, produced and maybe not acted. I don't believe she's acting at all. Um, I could be wrong. Maybe she's gone back at this point. She has two children, I believe, and she. You know, so on Facebook, occasionally we will keep in touch, which is really nice. You know, that, that's super. And um, I, you know who I do really keep in touch with is Kip Marcus. Kip and I were very close in, uh, in life when he was doing the show. And uh, he has five children. Wow. And he wow. Lived, I know, he has five kids. And he <laughs> lives in Luxembourg. Wow. And uh, he, 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 I don't re- exactly know what he's doing, uh, but he, he, his business takes him, I think, all over the world. So he's, he's doing something. I don't think he's acting uh, right now. I think he's working and raising these wonderful kids. And I think his son actually appeared in the movie recently. And you know, his son really, is like 12 yeah. or something. I, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, it's really funny. Uh, I, uh, you know, Eric Osman is a Facebook friend of mine, and somehow, some way, oh. my my, I don't know what happened, but 
somehow my my phone got bumped and it clicked on Kip Marcus and it clicked on one of those those Facebook phone things and all of a sudden oh. I pick, I take my phone out of my pocket and it's ringing it's ringing him and I thought ooh you know like oh my god like I wow. hope <laughs> like I really hope he's not like thinking I'm some sort of weird stalker or something oh, like that but no, no, but <laughs> no I I'll have a chance I'll I'll try to tell him about this I'll, you know, <laughs> and say no 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 he's okay he's okay <laughs> well when you do talk to him have him uh, have him take a look at. Uh, the Facebook, the, the new Leave It to Beaver page. I will, I will, I will. I mean, you know, that's a that's an. I mean, I look back now at the episodes, and he was just terrific. He was so good, and he, you know, that that was he and Johnny Sneeze mm-hmm. show. And and the funny so, thing is, is you know, he took the role as the older brother after Corey Feldman, just the same as I, Tony Dow did after Paul Sullivan. Yes, right. That's right. That's right. That's right. What a parallel. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. I think oh. I all stayed in the business, actually, as actors. They all kind of went off and became successful at, at other businesses. Janice, um, we last year got a chance to talk to Tammy O'Rourke, who's the sister of Heather O'Rourke, and I know that she appeared on a couple episodes of The New Leave to Beaver. We have been yeah. kind of going through, and anytime I interview somebody who's worked with her, we, we kind of just ask, and we're collecting stories about Heather and wonder if you have any stories to share about her oh, episodes. I do, I, I do remember her. Um, she was a very, very sweet little girl and very, um, very professional. Actually, both she and Kalina were like two little pros mm-hmm. because Kalina had been on a big show in New York with Tony Randall. So she was very used to being... Wasn't that Love, uh, Sydney? It, Love, Sydney, she was Correct. on. And, and Heather, of course, had been in movies. So uh, the only thing I can tell you, I didn't have uh, too much to do with her because we, you know, most of the scenes that she had were... Were with the kids. You know, with Kalina, with, with the kids. But uh, no, I just can only remember her as a very sweet and a very, very professional little girl. She knew her stuff. Now, Linda Gray was a guest on Fan Counters um, almost when we started the podcast. So that was uh, at least like 50 weeks ago. It was a long time. <laughs> um, oh. But we had a great conversation about directing because she had to fight yeah. so hard to direct an episode of Dallas. Even though Patrick and Larry were already doing it, she wanted her way in. And she pretty much had to threaten to quit in order to get a chance to direct. I'm bringing that up because you have two directing credits for the new Leave to Beaver. I do. And it was around the same time period where not a lot of females yeah. were directing. So talk to me about what that was like for you. Did you have to fight for your chance to direct? Well, I did, but not nearly so hard. I was very lucky because Brian, again, was uh, of a mind. I mean, I went to him and said, okay, this one has directed and that one has directed and, well, you know, whatever. And I said, and, and, and I'd like to direct. And I said, not, but what I said is, um, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to, because, you know, back then, and I don't know if it's the same procedure now, it very well may be, people would come in who wanted to direct or who were kind of in line to direct, and they would sort of shadow the directors who were directing that week's episodes. So they would be on the set, they would watch, they would get to know, you know, the the director of photography, the crew, they would get to see how the show was done and what the storyboard would be, all that kind of stuff. So I said to Brian, look, I want to do this, so I'm going to come in on my days that I'm not in the show, because uh, there were many scenes that I wasn't in, and I'm going to come and I'm going to shadow whoever is directing that week when I'm not on call to work, Mm -hmm. because I will just really do the same procedure that all these other guys are doing. (laughs) And he said, okay, fine. (laughs) And... It, it, we, I did it, and I did it for several weeks, and I did it for several weeks, and then finally he turned to me and he said, okay, the one after next week is yours. Wow. And I went, <gasps> I was terrified. <laughs> but I also was very prepared, and um, that, that was Cursed Again, was my first one. 
And um, I, there was a lot of technical stuff that had to go on in that episode. And Peter Smokler, who was the director of photography, and I worked really closely together to do it. And he really, you know, guided me uh, that way, what my strong suit was. And so it became, as I became an acting coach, it bore out, um, was uh, directing the actors. And my, my castmates, who were very, um, you know, uh, accommodating, they mm-hmm. really, I became the director of course, it was interesting directing yourself, and then you jump in and do that's your scene. That's always my. That's you... always my curiosity is how how someone is going to direct an episode and then also be in the episode that they're directing. You know, it's like I, I, I yeah. If you have, I, I was again, I was not very heavy in the episode. So, if you are really, um, see, you know, if you're in some of these people who direct movies and direct this movie and then they're the lead and they're in almost every scene in the movie or something. I'm like, Ooh, that is, <laughs> that, that's hard. I mean, it's hard. You learn, you, you, you know, it is a separate thing, but, um, so I, I really appreciate that Linda Gray had to even fight that hard to, to threaten to quit. I didn't have nearly that. I, I, and I was very, uh, it was lucky. I came in under budget, came in on time, you know, all these things that, they look at and then he gave me another one and so I wanted to pursue it I definitely did I liked it very much but as I said my daughter was born right after that and I you know looked at this and it was such an uphill battle for women at that point and I thought I don't there's no way I'm going to be able to devote the the kind of energy of, of getting out there and you know making a short film or you know, really pressing the flesh and meeting people or really doing whatever it would take to try to get another chance. Uh, so I did not pursue it. And uh, I went much more toward the coaching part of it and then life coaching. And now I do voiceover work as well. I do lots of voiceover work. So where has your voiceover work been? It's been Shari Berry's. Uh, at Christmas time, I do uh, Sherry's Berries often. I've done um, some television commercials for a chain of stores out here for Mervyn's, uh, one for actually for Marshall's and Mervyn's. I've done uh, back in the day when Oprah Winfrey had uh, her uh, network, she would do a lot of podcasts. Not po- They weren't called podcasts. They were <laughs> Things that she <laughs> that that's recent, but she would have like narrative things that she would have on her channel, and uh, I would I would also do some some work for her there. I would do um, you know pampers, uh, diapers, and all kinds of all different over. products and things like that. And I also have uh, narrated an audio book, which is actually on um, Audible right now. It's called This Way Up. And it was written by a New Zealand author, and it's basically um, kind of a self-help book, Tools for Changing Your Life, I think it's called, Seven Tools for Changing Your Life, I've forgotten. It's called This Way Up is the name of the book. So that was a really fun experience, too, narrating the whole book. So that, I'm keeping, definitely keeping my hand in uh, as, you know, as much as possible. Uh, you know, it's my passion. Well, I recently ran Billy. into you on uh, an episode of Wings. Yes, <laughs> way back then, yes. Yeah, that was, what, Wings. like, what, probably, like, late 80s? Pro- well, no, probably before. Cause, yeah. Yeah, probably shortly after the new Leave it to Beaver had ended, I would think. Yes, yes. There were some things that right right after that, Designing Women, I did that, Who's the Boss, um, Days of Our Lives, and then... Uh, I did uh, an episode with uh, Jerry O'Connell uh, for a show called Sliders mm-hmm. in in uh, Vancouver. So lots of cool people, actually. Yeah, you also worked with Fred and Barney in the Flintstone movie. Yes, I did. <laughs> so I have to hear about this because we talked with Cindy Bagel about writing the movie, one of 35 writers. Uh, but you were a stewardess in the film, right? Yes, I play on, on a pterodactyl. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> Tell me about what it you remember. It was really awesome if you if you saw how it was done because of course it's on a green screen. Yeah. And you went on the set and in the sound stage and it was this contraption of just it didn't look like anything like a pterodactyl. <laughs> it was just like 
you know, some sort of wing thing and, and some sort of box. And I had to climb up this ladder and it was on kind of wires because they want, they moved it. They wanted the movement. That, yeah. Yeah. That, as the, as the pterodactyl was flying. So there I am today going, Oh, whatever my lines were. And I'm like, okay, this thing is like moving. And I'm like, you know, whatever, 15 feet in the air. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this is, this is fun. And, there, and then there's Brian. Okay, let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah, I think uh, that's one of the earlier um, like CG movies where you know it was like yes. like very early. And yes. I think if I if I remember correctly, I think Eric Osman worked behind the camera on one of those movies. I think he did too because I think he was. I don't know if Eric is still an editor, but he was editing at one point. I know that's what he what he did at that point. So I don't know if he, yes, Brian, as a matter of fact, Brian was so sweet that my daughter is in the scene. She was a little cave girl. Oh, <laughs> she cool. She was like four or five or something. And he let, she went in and she had a little cave costume and they were all at the, at the pool or something, you know, and it was really quite extensive when we went out there because the, my thing was, was on the soundstage and, uh, at universal and, and, uh, and of course, she went out to the quarry where they right. were doing all this outside stuff. It was extensive. <laughs> it was amazing. So, what was your thought when you saw the scene put together and you actually were in a pterodactyl? Uh, I loved that. Yeah, I loved it. I think, you know, like you were saying, it was new. It was very new to see CGI or any of that. It was like, wow, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> very, very cool. I thought it was great. I thought it was amazing because Elizabeth Taylor was on the right. set. I didn't oh. get to see her, but I was trying to get on the set when she was there. I was just like, my gosh, Brian, we've gone from Leave it to Beaver to Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> my <laughs> life is great. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, it was good. Yeah, so each time we, you know, we run into actors and actresses, they appear on classic TV, you know, you've, Done like Who's the Boss at Highway to Heaven, uh, Fraser. Yeah. Do you have any stories from working on any of those shows? Any of the actors that you might have worked with? Any moments that might have happened? I'm trying to think. I mean, it was really uh, interesting to watch uh, Kelsey Grammer, who um, up until the last moment, right before Fraser, um, uh, they were filming, you know, in front of a live audience. Uh, he, I, I think he was sure he didn't remember his lines and we would, were running the lines in the makeup room before we were to start and he didn't remember any of his lines. Oh or my lines gosh. Of, but uh, there were quite a few that he, and but then he would get out there and he just knew everything. Huh. And it was so funny because it wasn't there in the rehearsal, but then boom. It was there. And I do have an interesting story about Michael Landon from Highway to Heaven. Oh, please. It really, oh, wow. it really was a, a, more of an audition story. I'll tell it very quickly. I had gone to audition for it. And as I started, he, they said, okay, we're going to go down. I read for the casting director. She said, okay, we're going to go get uh, Michael. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. And then I was waiting and I went in the room and I was walked in. Michael Landon, and that I was starstruck. I was like, because you know, had grown up watching him, and I just was like, oh my gosh. So I started the audition for him to do it for him because, of course, he was the director and the star of that show. And I started the audition, and I just went, you know, I just fell over my tongue, got all tied, and I just. You know, but what I did is, and this was a real lesson that I have told actors, young actors, is that for some reason I had the presence of mind. It was right as I started the audition, but I had the presence of mind to very calmly stop and say, I'm going to start again. Mm. I didn't ask. I just did it. And he I started it and I, I remember turning around and then I had to turn to face out toward where he was. And as I turned my back to him to start again, I thought to myself, you better not mess this up. Okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah, second and I chance. I did it, and I did it well, and I had the part. And he told me later on on the set, you know, you got the part because of the way you handled that. Wow. And I knew. It's those little I things. Knew, it's the little things. Yes. Yeah, it, because, it, you know, it's so expensive to make these shows. Yeah. And he said, because I knew that I could put you on the set 
and I could trust you. My mother and actually thought, got yeah. to meet Michael Landon in his Bonanza days. She was living, she was living in Arizona when she was a little girl, and she got to meet him when he was working wow. on Bonanza. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. It was very cool. So I really had some really fun high moments, you know, for sure. So we'll just have to have some more. That's all I can say. I hope so. Um, I did Me notice too. this is kind of a weird, funny movie that came out. It was called The Kentucky Fried Movie. It was directed oh, yeah. by Animal House and Blues Brother director John Landis. So unlike a film, this movie had like 22 sketches in it. And it looks like right. this might have been one of your first projects. So do you remember what your oh, was. skit was? Yeah, it was. One of first projects in, um, in California. Um, a friend of mine was doing a, a bit in it as an actress. And she she's since retired from acting too. But she, she called and said, listen, they're, 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 they're looking for somebody. And I think you'd be really right for this. I'm not even sure I had an agent at the time. <laughs> and so, okay, the same sort of thing. Last yeah. minute, ran down there. And got the part, and I played um, Barbara Duncan was her name, and she was a she was a um, on air you know announcer like the Today Show sort of announcer. And of course, in my segment, everything was going wrong. Like Uh-oh. you know, they'd say, "Okay, now we're going to cut to uh, the weatherman," and you know, I don't know, he would be like just getting up from having gone to the bathroom or something awful and <laughs> then they'd cut back to my face and I'd be like oh my god you know that kind of thing and uh it was very very slapstick and very crazy and um and then I'm thinking I think it was um oh gosh what is his name Rick he became a very famous um makeup man he he got in a gorilla suit and at the very end of my little segment he just was like crashing through the whole set and I'm trying to hold it together for the camera like it like pretending that the whole set isn't crashing down around me so it was one of those kinds of things it was very fun and I think John Mendes went on then from then to lots of fame and, yeah big and, movies uh, Bruce Brothers and all that stuff in fact Tony and Jerry were in that movie the Kentucky really? Fried, Fried movie? movie the Kentucky Fried movie right yeah yeah yeah, and, yeah in another that. segment completely Huh. And I, of course, I never met them. And years and years and years later, there it was. Yeah. I got to find that on Amazon. The thing, when I found out about it and started reading about it, it was like unbelievable that a movie had come out like that. So, Yes. That was one of the first ones of those, too. And we didn't even know. I mean, for me, when I was... <laughs> When I saw the whole movie, I went to a screening, and it was, you know, I mean, some of it was very questionable taste, which today, I suppose, is not so crazy. Back then, it was sure. kind of like, back then, oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. you know, wow. But, you know, I, I was, like, very happy to have gotten a start, and then, you know, I, I got to work with Ed Asner on Lou Grant, was a spinoff, and then the biggest thing for me was that I played Michael Keaton's girlfriend oh boy. in a show that Mary Tyler Moore did right after that big series ended, her big Mary Tyler Moore show. She wanted to do a show like Carol Burnett had done, like a right. variety, oh, like show. variety show. Yeah, yeah. so they, they created a, a, a kind of new form for her, which was half hour, it was going to be an hour show, and half hour was going to be her life as a, television star mary whatever her name was in the okay. show uh and her life at home with her her friends and co-workers and whatever assistants and this and that and then the other half hour was the variety show itself so i happened to play michael keaton who was her like i don't know what assistant or something her girlfriend his girlfriend who had come in and was completely starstruck by hollywood and by mary and then the most exciting part was that the second half, I would sit in, I wasn't in it, but it was rehearsals, and I got to see her guest that week was Dick Van Dyke. Oh, wow. So it was Mary Tyler Moore and Dick Van Dyke, and they were rehearsing in the, at CBS, and I got to see them uh, do a song and dance routine together, and uh, that really, talk about starstruck. Yeah, no, that's, was, that's a treat. Yeah, that's a big, big treat. So thank you for allowing me to remember all these great things. <laughs> <laughs> it's our pleasure. 
Well, I have one more question. It's my last one for you. I think Brian has one more after this. On the Fan Encounters Celebrity Podcast, the mission of our show is to get guests talking about their favorite encounters with their fans. So maybe you oh. have one that kind of creeped you out. Maybe one that was really fun. <laughs> what experiences with your fans will you never forget? Oh, my gosh. Well, um, first of all, I am always so incredibly grateful that people will recognize me because, as you said, the uh, the new Leave it to Beaver, which was such a big part of my life, five years, more than that, five, six years, mm-hmm. and it didn't get as wide. So I, I, you know, when people come up, which they do, even still, somebody would say to me, I watched you as a kid. And I'm like, really? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you. So I'm always very grateful about that. The creeped out part um, is in the very beginning with Leave it to Beaver, I, I would get a, I was getting a lot of fan mail. But the fan mail, quite a bit of it was coming from prisons. Really? That was, yeah, that's a new TV yeah. show they have out now. You know, you could be on. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so go ahead. No, Sorry, no. that's my new career. <laughs> but no, I was just very surprised, and it was kind of like, ooh, really? And because uh, I was getting quite a bit of it, but I, I thought, well, I guess they have the time to watch TV. Yeah. So that's good. <laughs> there was that, but no, in terms of people remembering, and 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 especially now, uh, where people will actually go, yeah, I, I actually did grow up watching this. I, I I saw this. I'm I'm very grateful. And just now, people will look at me and go, I know, I know you. I know mm, you. I know, okay. I know you. And, I, and then it's me saying, well, okay. <laughs> I, what would those prison letters <laughs> say, though? Would they be like, you know, hey, when I get out, we should go on a date? Or, I mean, wh- what was the goal of well, these letters? That kind of thing, like, oh, you're so, you're pretty, and I'd like to, you know, maybe see you sometime, and, you know, I'll be out soon, and that. I'd oh, be like, no. <laughs> okay. You know, this was a little scary at the time. And, <laughs> you know, I, it was, I didn't expect it. I think I was just surprised. At least too. they gave you a warning when you had to upgrade your security system by. So that was kind of kind. Nice. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. No, and that was a long time ago. So you know, things are different now. So for oh, sure, yeah. No, and I think what you guys are doing is just terrific. And I again, I'm very uh, pleased to be part of it and grateful. And and I I really hope that uh, the both the podcast and the page kind of get more attention on, on this show because I, in looking at it and re-looking at it now, what a, what a nice, sweet, kind, good show. And boy, don't we ever need that now. Amen one, to that. One, one of my big pet peeves is like, you know, and, you know, a lot of people of the original show will say, well, they'll see it and they'll be like, well, it's not like the, old show well of course it's not you know when i watched it as a kid when i first saw it i thought i thought that wasn't my first thought and i've been watching the old show at that point for a while so it for me it was like uh, it's it's an 80s show with these cast members in it and you got to see their life as a as you know in the 80s with their kids Exactly. Yeah, exactly. it was. Yeah, it, exactly. I yeah. think it was hard. I, as I look back and remembering, actually, Brian, that um, I remember that in the very beginning, the reaction to the movie, there was a lot of pushback because it was very. It, it, I think it was hard for people to accept that Tony and Jerry had grown up. Yeah, I that, think there yeah. was a. a it, ahead, it put, oh no no I I sorry I interrupted but no I was gonna say it's it's kind of like a reminder that they're grown up too. Yes yes yeah sure of course of course you're absolutely right and and think that was really it so I think there was a, an initial kind of like oh do we you know no 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 let's just keep them little boys so you're you're right uh, there might have been a, a reluctance but I I'm, I think more than anything it was just that it was on cable. And that it didn't get once it went into syndication, it wasn't many. There weren't many markets that got a chance <laughs> to see it, and I just always feel like it just—I don't know—still, still, still uh, has value. But okay, hashtag bring back, bring back the and, new show. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, you know, I whatever mean, that is. Yeah, you and you can tell that. everybody about the podcast and and the page, and hopefully that will 
bring in some awareness. Yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, this is a, a whole life of social media and and all of that. So I, I don't know. You know, it's Somebody funny. Suggested. I yeah, it's it. it's funny that you that you talk about the way fans didn't want to be reminded about how old they were, you know, when the, when the yeah. new show came on. As a nine year old kid, when I first saw when I first saw the the uh, well, they were syndicated, chopped up versions of the movie. When I first saw the opening, the you know they have these like like violin string plucks of the mm. of the theme that brought a tear to my eye and i was mm-hmm. i was a kid you know like i was thinking you know like it's bringing you know you're bringing back the memory of of the childhood in of that time and yeah i mean yeah. and and i just recently you know cindy had recently told me that um uh, who was it a music composer that worked on that and he also did some composing on a, a lot of the episodes but mm-hmm. now I know who composed that, and it was brilliant because it just stunned you with emotion. I mean, it was just, and mm. it was just such a simple, mm. just a simple instrument that played that song in like a somber kind of a right. sad, it put a sad mood into you. It was, it was brilliantly yes. done. It was brilliantly done. Well, I think it opened, did, did the movie, I haven't seen it in so, so long, oh my gosh, but did the movie open with Ward's funeral? There was an opening with it, it didn't open with that. It actually opened, you know, it, it started with Beaver fighting with his wife and he gets kicked out of the house. And yeah. then he goes, oh. "Yeah, we don't see we don't see Beaver, you know, they don't see the part in the cemetery until Beaver's in the house and then he's like mem- remembering and then there's a part where they're showing okay. Ward, you know, Ward reading in the original episode, you know, the original show where he's playing, you know, he's reading the composition that Beaver did on him, the most uh-huh. interesting character. So he's, re- he's remembering that. And then, yeah, then you see the, the, ring. and then we see the funeral. Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering if that was, cause it's been so long. I don't, I should watch the movie if I can. Well, you can find it. It's on Scott Hetrick's page and yeah, he's got it. You can definitely find it. Scott, if you're listening, thank you. Thank you. Oh, he's definitely, he's definitely listening. You know, we're we're sitting here, we're talking about cemeteries. That brings me to my last question, actually. (laughs) What a, what a tie in. What a, what a segue. Yeah. What a segue. (laughs) So yeah, what, you know, we've we've lost a few of the of the cast members in recent years. Uh, you know, Barbara Billingsley, um, Frank Bank, um, Richard Deacon passed away. I mean, he passed away pretty much right after the yeah. movie. Yeah, and then the movie. most recently, we we lost Dennis Snee. So I know. Yeah, oh. so we'd like to collect your memories. You know, what you remember about them, and are there any? Any well, you that know, you I was have. talking about Barbara, who who really does. Barbara gave me life advice. Really, uh, just talk about a life coach. She really was like a life coach to me and a great friend. We saw each other often afterwards for lunch. I saw her right before she passed away. Frank was a great friend, and we, we also, uh, he was uh, married at that time to a woman who became friendly. We all kind of I had some social times with Tony and all of that as well. It was very, very sad. And and Dennis, um, I had not seen Dennis until I think there was. Brian had us all together. Oh, my gosh, when? It feels like it was like a minute ago, and it was probably, I don't know what, 10 years or something, a long time ago. And we all got together and had a reunion, and I saw Dennis at that point it might have even been more than 10 um lovely man great uh father to john what was so darling is that really uh, he was always there on the set available to john and um of course in the writer's room and and writing episodes and things like that but very um unassuming uh kind i like dennis very much i was horrified to find this out recently just so sad so, uh, no, you know, I just, uh, how could that, how could this all be happening? I don't know. I don't, just life, I guess, but boy, 
Time I keeps didn't ever ticking. think when we did that episode where we were all kind of in the future and Molly and I and Mary Ellen were the grandparents that we'd ever kind of get there, you know? It was like, <laughs> not us. Well, and now, we now we're in this era, you know, kid, yep. you know, you know the kids that were kids when you were when you were in the age of having kids they right. are now having kids and right you know and who knows maybe maybe you'll be a grandmother some well, sometime you know, soon well that's the whole point that's it that's life and i think that's that was what was so nice about barbara too is that she just just well of course she was a grandmother in life but she was just absolutely uh, gracious about segueing into that stage of her life and so i take a cue from that and carry it on oh absolutely well janice we we really appreciate your time thank you so much for all the information you give us Ed, the one the one of my favorite pieces of information from tonight is what what's the name of that hashtag again it's hashtag bring back t-n-l-i-t-b the new leave it to beaver so hashtag bring back T-N-L-I-T-B. B. Got it. Yeah, we'll definitely we'll definitely have to start that one going. I'm going <laughs> to push that out on our page. We've got 30,000 following us, so if we can get a bunch of those people to uh, pass that along, we could get some steam absolutely. quick. Absolutely. And absolutely, feel free to share the new Leave it to Beaver fan page. I will do that, yes. I, I definitely will do that. Thank you so much, guys. Well, I really, what a, what a treat. It was great. I really do appreciate you being oh, yeah. on our show. Yeah, we, we really appreciate you. it. Thank, Thank you. you. You have a great rest of the night. Yeah, you too. Take care. Okay. My thanks to Janice Kent for joining us on the show this week. Again, that hashtag that we talked about was... Hashtag bring back T-N-L-I-T-B. Start passing that around and let's get the show back on the air. Wouldn't it be great to see another generation of the Cleavers coming to television? Uh, it doesn't even have to, like, you know, what we saw with Fuller House coming out. The show's going to change. It's going to morph into something else. But wouldn't it be great if we actually made that happen? So let's uh, let's get on that. You can follow us on social media. We're at FanCounters Live on Twitter. You can also email us at hello at FanCounters.com. We've got another great celebrity guest coming up next week. So stay tuned. We'll talk to you next Friday. <laughs>